So I wanted to do a video that went through an example, but I think first we really need to talk about how do you know when it's time to do a log? And the number one best way is if the expert tells you that the theory indicates there should be a log. And you'll know that by the way they word it with a multiplicative effect. Like if you double your advertising, you'll triple your sales. Okay, that's a log log model because doubling is a multiplicative effect and tripling is times three effect. So that would tell you that you need logs because theoretically there's multiplying that you need to do. In this class, in the methods course, we don't always get that advantage. We don't get to find out that there is some expert who theoretically knows what the model should be. We're exploring the data, so we don't get to use number one very much. But we can try to look at the plot of the variables, and if you see this exploding, whooshing pattern, that might indicate that there's exponential growth, which indicates a log. And that pattern can show up in different ways. This one here is exploding off in the x direction. It was climbing nice and slowly and then whoosh off to the right. Here we have one that's climbing up in the y direction. And I don't know if you can tell, it's a little subtle, but it's not only climbing, it's also fanning out just a little bit because this is an example of where y gets logged and it affects the way the variables are. So this whooshing, curving, and fanning indicate a log y. But this one here would be a log log type example where we have a bunch of data down here and then it explodes not in x or in y, but both it explodes along that regression line. Because both x and y were logged, it still looks like a straight line but it still has that exploding pattern in there. So if you see some of those patterns, that's an indication that there's probably a log, which is why we're gonna write for number three, the data explodes in some direction. I had to cut off some of my graph, but it was exploding either to the right along x's or up, or in this case, exploding out. That indicates there might be some exponential growth that you might try. Now, admittedly, when you get to the final project, you've got so many variables, doing so many complicated things, it can't always be easy to spot this sort of thing. So you might be looking at the residuals instead of the data itself, and if the residuals seem to fly off in some direction, that might be an indication that you'll try a log. That's not the only reason why residuals can fly off, so sometimes a log won't work. But number four, you're allowed to fish a little bit and try logs and see if that improves things or not. In this class, we're a lot about doing exploratory studies. We just want to see what patterns we can find, and then later we'll study more about whether that pattern was real. So fishing is going to be allowed because we want to know if we can find some pattern. So you can try a log and throw the log out and see which one you like better. I'll warn you that realistically, having x and log x in the same model is not very realistic. I have never seen a real life example where both x and log x should have both been in the model. In this class, if you decide that that gives you a better predictability equation or whatever else, you're allowed to do that if you want to. Just be really careful that you don't use r squared to decide whether your model has improved because r squared is going to go up if you have more terms, regardless of whether those terms are junk or not. You should be looking at those residuals. In this class, you can also look at errors. If there's a great improvement in the errors, you can use that to say your model is better. You have to be careful because you can overfit a model, meaning you found patterns that aren't really there that drop your errors, but they wouldn't work if you had a different data set or if you redid the study. So realistically, it's not always easy to tell when you need a log. That's why you should talk to the experts in real life. In this class, though, we're going to look for explosions either in the data or in the residuals when the data shoots off in one direction or another, and we'll try it and see if a log improves it. So now let's go and actually look at a specific example.